What's up everybody, it's your boy Meme here. For breakfast I had two eggs, I have a story about one of those. Um, and I think two bananas and uh, two leftover falafel balls and some pita bread and that was tasty. Um, you know, I'm just hanging out today. Uh, I don't know, you know, I'm just doing my thing I guess. Uh, I woke up at 5.10 today, this morning. Um, and then I... You know, I got ready after that. Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> no, I got ready, I got to school. Um, oh no, I have to tell you the story about the egg. One of the eggs was really weird, and on the, uh, more sort of circular side of the egg, I guess, um, it, uh, there was like a weird crater, and I was like, that's weird, but, you know, eggs are, <laughs> eggs are weird, it's weird that we eat those, and it's hard-boiled, um, it's weird that we eat hard-boiled eggs, so, and sometimes, you know, you just, you're eating a hard-boiled egg, and it just looks a little weird, but it tastes fine, you know, like, you know, it's like, kind of RNG on how that egg will look, um, so I just thought it would be more RNG, right, but I peeled it, it was really hard to peel, and it felt really rough, so I put some salt and pepper on it, and I had it uh, before my other egg because I wanted to sort of save the best for last. The other egg was fine. Um, and I ate it and it was weird. <laughs> it was rough and it wasn't like, you know when you have a hard boiled egg and it's a little like, not moist because it's not wet at all, but it's like kind of cold and kind of slippery. Um, and then the yolk is sort of um, rough. <laughs> I'm describing this in a really gross way, but it, it, you know, hard boiled eggs taste good. Um, but you know what I mean? Uh, instead, it was just rough. It was rough all the way through, and it was like I was, it was, it was like It was a grody egg. Um, so I just threw the other half away, and I swallowed the other half because it wasn't like it didn't taste bad. Just the texture was so strange, um, and I swallowed it because I wasn't gonna throw up if I swallowed it. Um, and I can't imagine it was like bad. Like it didn't taste bad. The texture was just weird. Um, but yeah, then I got to school. I had English 101. We talked about just some random stuff. Uh, we talked about how we we're not going to do essay three. Essay two is going to be our final essay because my teacher was sick for a couple weeks and I kind of threw everything out of whack. Um, and then I had business class and I met with my group for this group project where we talk about my group itinerary for India, like a business meeting in India. And uh, you know, that went okay, I guess. Um, and then, um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, then after math class, I sort of hung around. Um, I decided I'm going to do my final English essay on the Charlie Kaufman movie, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which is based off a book of the same name. And, uh, you know, it's going to be on whether or not it's a cultural object. Um, I'm sort of leaning toward it not being a cultural object, because Hannah Arendt talks about um, how intellectuals uh, sort of translate art um, and, you know, modify art uh, to make it more accessible for the general public um, and make the general public think they're uh, consuming something worldly when, you know, through the act of consuming it, it's impossible for them to experience a worldly object through the translated media, right? So, um, Charlie Kaufman making a movie based off a book is sort of just that exact concept. However, Nobody watching I'm Thinking of Ending Things is watching it with the intention of filling vacant time. Um, you know, the people who watch I'm Thinking of Ending Things, you know, they watch it, they see it's in 4x3, you know, they, they see it's recorded on film, and they see the trailer, and they see it's a weird movie. Um, and they're ready for a weird, artsy, sort of, you know, seemingly intellectual experience and they're interacting with world, you know? And I feel like, you know, through that concept, it really just depends on whether or not you think that an object gets its sense of world from the people consuming it, or the intention of the art. Because I feel like the intention of the art is sort of to be translated into something consumable by, you know, mass society, right? Or, or mass culture, sorry. Um, but everybody in mass culture consuming it consumes it as a, a sort of a world art 
uh, in the same way that that society uh, that mass society would consume like a like a impressionist painting, you know, like a Monet or something. You know, Monet paintings are very, 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 you know, their world, right? But you know, you look at um, people people consume like mass mass culture consumes a Monet painting in the same way that mass culture consumes I'm thinking of ending things. But one of those is definitionally a cultural object, the Monet painting. And one of them is sort of definitionally sort of a translated work, um, which is impossible for it to be an object. But, you know, so I, I, you know, I don't want to talk in circles like that, like in my essay, but that's what the gist is going to be. Um, and another whole thing about the essay that I like is that it's not just a raw analysis like the Hannah Arendt essay, which was just dry and sucked. Um, it sucked to write. Like, it was interesting. I like society and culture, but like, it, it, was, it wasn't a good experience to write that essay, you know? Um, you're going to be talking about the object in this upcoming essay just as much as you're talking about your own thinking in relation to the object. So, I'm going to be talking about how I view it in a very, um, in, in a very sort of world sense, you know, when, um, you know, that, that's, that's not necessarily the context in which it was made, you know, and it's got a famous actor in it. I don't know about the woman, uh, but I know the guy's a famous actor and it's just like, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. We'll see as I'm writing the essay, you know, um, but yeah, you know, I'm just hanging out. I hope, is that it? Yeah, I don't know. And then I had, so anyway, at school, <laughs> at school, I tried to, um, I have it downloaded this movie on my NAS server, um, and I tried to move it over rsync, over through Tailscale, from my NAS server to my laptop, which it kept not working. So I just watched the partially downloaded file, which isn't the same. Um, and I watched like 20 minutes of it, and then it was math class, so then I did math. Math was fine. We're doing, um, we're doing like, uh, Co signs, cosines, and tangents, which we did, I think, at the end of junior year, at the beginning of senior year. Um, so it's all just still review, but it's interesting, and, you know, it's certainly expanding my, um, my knowledge of them. Uh, especially considering, you know, when we were going through, we are going at about the same speed that my senior year went, but the great thing is, is that each class is, like, two and a half hours instead of an hour. Um, so, you're able to get way more in depth in almost every single thing that the teacher talks about as an example, and it's very succinct. Um, by the end of it, it's kind of difficult to not understand how the work works. Um, so um, that was nice. Uh, and you know, then I took the uh, train to downtown, and then I took the bus from downtown to the strip mall, and then my dad picked me up at the strip mall, and I've got work tomorrow. I've got work tomorrow, <laughs> but yeah. Um, I hope everybody has a really good day, and alright, see you.